All participants are now muted. Okay, guys, I think um, I think we're probably ready to start. Um, so hopefully uh, everyone can see the screen um, and didn't have too many problems joining with the audio. Okay, so uh, yeah, so good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for for taking some time out this morning to join this uh, this short webinar. I'll, I'll try and keep it fairly short. I know I know everyone's busy, um, and it's really um, just sort of a sneak peek into to release eleven as opposed to a fully sort of in depth. And technical presentation. So my name's uh, Chris Jacob, and I'm part of the uh, pre-sales team at Westcon on the uh, Avaya IP office side. Um, we've also got Niall Kalman from uh, from Avaya on the call. Um, if there's any uh, any questions during the the presentation, um, I've muted everyone um, to save all the noise. Um, so if you could possibly just pop uh, questions into the uh, into the message window or the chat box at the bottom. And we'll try and answer any questions there. Um, also, at the end of the presentation, there's a there's a slide with our um, pre-sales email address on it. So if there's any sort of questions that you've got that may take a bit longer to answer, or you or you need some more information, if you just pop us an email, and um, then we can work on those um, later on. Okay, so uh, yeah, so just before we start um, on this content, so the, the the information that we're actually going to be showing today um, is not generally available yet. Um, so release 11 um, is is not available until uh, next year. Um, so obviously there could be changes. So everything we talk about in this presentation, there is a chance that there could be a change or a tweak here and there. So uh, so just to be aware of that. Okay, so um, yeah, so looking back over the last uh, the last few releases um, of IP Office, um, we've seen some big changes in terms of uh, capacity growth. So if you look back from some from 9.1, um, in Server Edition we um, we moved up to 3,000 extensions. So they, they, you know this is making it a, a truly scalable uh, mid-market platform with the IP Office. Um, so then with release 10. Uh, we saw uh, migration to PLDS uh, and the ability to have the uh, centralized uh, licensing. Um, and then last summer, so just in August, uh, we've had 10.1 released. So this brought into the portfolio um, more resiliency, some new endpoints. Um, we then saw some new applications. So we saw the initial release of ICR, which was the um, the, the kind of basic reporting package, sort of the, the replacement for, for CCR that we had back on 9.1. Um, we also saw the um, introduction of Media Manager. So prior to that, we had Contact Store, which was the, the Windows-based recording. Then we got Contact Recorder, which moved Contact Store into a Linux platform. Um, and now uh, we have Media Manager, which going forward is going to be the reporting package. Uh, we also saw in 10.1 some additional um, hypervisors being introduced. So not only uh, do we have VMware, um, we've now got Hyper-V, which I know a lot of people are asking for, and there are also options um, in there for Amazon Web Services and a couple of others as well. So with re uh, release 11, um, we look to build on, on the solid foundation that we've had since you know, 9.1, 10, adding in um, a whole host of uh, improvements and new features. We've got some new applications um, and some additional uh, scalability to look at. So where we are at the moment, um, release 11 beta trial just started. So in the last week and a half to two weeks, um, we finally received the release 11 beta software. So that is in um, currently being tested. The expected release date for release 11 uh, will be the end of February, somewhere around the 26th. But again, that could change, um, so don't take that as a as 100%.
So as, uh, as we're moving forward with IP Office, um, we're, we're looking at the, the UC applications um, and trying to sort of push towards a single um, UC client um, or a single set of UC clients. So rather than having, uh, so currently at the moment we've got um, a via communicator for Windows, which is a Windows soft phone, then you've got a different soft phone for Mac, um, and then there's a different application for the mobile, um, and then we've also got some WebRTC clients as well. Um, so what the idea is, is to bring all these clients um, into a single client. So um, we, we will start seeing a move to a via Equinox, and that will mean that your mobility client and your desk or your soft phone on your desktop um, will be a single client. They'll look the same, and you'll have a sort of a, you know, a more consistent cross-platform experience, I guess, across your Windows, your Mac, um, and your mobile clients too. So first of all, I just want to show um, a new um, WebRTC client. So this this uh, WebRTC client was actually available in 10.1. Um, it was a um, running customer feedback edition, which means it was it wasn't officially supported as a client. It was just available there for for, for you to test basically, um, and it was fully working. Um, and it was really aiming for a release 11 um, release. Um, so what this is is it's a it's a full soft phone. It leverages the WebRTC gateway. So that's available on both the application server and server edition. So if you've got a 500 v2, you can use the application server. The application server is the Linux server. That can run your voicemail, your One X, and also the WebRTC gateway. Um, and that is the gateway that this client will connect into. So the, the idea of this is it's designed to run in Chrome. So it's a thin, a thin client soft phone. Um, it's full voice, video. Uh, web collaboration, conferencing, voicemail, contacts, everything. So basically, a full a full soft phone that can run in your Chrome um, Chrome browser. There is also um, an option to download it as a as a Windows XE file. So if if you do want a thick client installed on your machine um, and you've got a Windows machine, you can run it um, as a as an installed client as opposed to through Chrome. If you're using a Chromebook, a MacBook, or a Windows machine, you can run it in in Chrome as well. Um, and we've got, you know, you can run it as a Chrome extension. When you run it as a Chrome extension, it embeds itself into the web page, much like a via communicator for web does. Um, and then this gives you options for for true click to dial um, on web pages. So when you see phone numbers on on web pages, you're able to um, click on them, and then you can dial from the web page. It's going to be uh, licensed um, much the same as, uh, as soft phones and, and the communicator for web. Um, so if you've got a, an office worker license or a power user, um, you, you will have access to this, um, this application itself. So as I mentioned, it's, it is a, fu um, a fully featured soft phone. Um, so all the, all the expected features will, will be there. Um, obviously, as the releases go on, more things will be added into this. Um, but in, in the initial release, um, you'll certainly be able to obviously have audio calls, video calls, um, presence, IM, conferencing. There's uh, links into the web collaboration. So the web collaboration is part of the One X portal install. So when you install the application server, you can inst you, um, you install the web collaboration, which is the screen sharing and whiteboarding um, for, for conferencing. Um, there is a license to enable web collaboration, um, but if you've got a, an office worker or power user and a web collaboration license, then you're able to, to, to leverage that application there. Um, as this is a, a Chrome-based soft phone, um, it's not limited to, to Windows or, or Mac, so you can use any, um, any chosen operating system. And as this is a, a soft phone, as mentioned, um, you don't need a physical phone. So this will be your phone. Um, so it's not, it's not an application that needs to integrate with a, with a handset or anything. You just need your USB headset um, and then your machine um, running Chrome. So with, 
um, release 11, um, we're also going to see a move towards the Equinox um, desktop and mobile clients for IP Office. So currently, this is um, this is part of the Aura platform, um, and it's where all the video conferencing side is going as well. Um, so what we're trying to do, as I mentioned a couple of slides ago, is is to bring um, bring the Equinox client in. Um, that gives you a mobile client and a and a soft phone that will work on Windows, Mac, um, or iOS or Android, and you've got a very similar looking application. Um, so rather than having all these different applications, um, we'll have a single client that looks the same. So eventually this will um, be replacing the One X Mobile Preferred um, that we currently have and the Avaya Communicator soft phone. Um, and then we've also got the options for the, for the WebRTC as well, if, if you want uh, that sort of thin client environment. So with the initial release, um, we will have some uh, basic features, which I've popped down the bottom of the screen there. Um, as the as the releases are are sent out next year, so going over through the summer, um, new features will be added into these clients, uh, making these the main the main clients really for for IP Office and UC. We've kind of got that um, top of mind look uh, look and feel. So on on the on the screenshot on the right hand side there, you can see the the top of mind the dashboard I guess, and what it's doing is it's just pulling all the information in from all your different um, calendars and messages and, and call logs, and it's popping them all into the into the front screen, um, so you can see exactly what you need to do that day, as and when, um, and it's giving it to you in that single place. So another, um, this is more of a tool, I suppose. Um, so th this is going to be new with release 11. It's something called COM or Cloud Operations Manager. So this is a, this is a tool that's uh, designed really um, for cloud deployments, um, but it can be used with uh, server edition and server edition select deployments as well. Um, essentially, it's a, a central management tool um, for, for all the IP offices that you can manage. Um, so in terms of a cloud deployment, I guess you would have, uh, say, you know, 20 customers running on, on a cloud platform. This is a tool for you to be able to monitor um, and see these um, instances running in a single place. So the application itself um, installs as a separate machine, so it doesn't run on, on a server edition or, or a, an application server. It's actually its own um, application that runs, so you can run it as an OVA. It can co-reside with OSS, which is the um, operations support system, which is part of the Powered By um, solution. Um, so it can co-reside on there. So if you've got a, a, a lot of customers running on, on Powered By, this tool um, will enable you to, to, to monitor them um, and amend them as well. Um, so COM will connect to Release 11, um, Server Edition, and Server Edition Select and uh, onwards. Um, it won't connect to a 500v2 um, standalone box. By default, this application um, connects to uh, a user and security settings. Um, for security reasons, that user in security is going to be disabled um, by default. So this is not something that's just going to be opened up on, on all systems. So if you want to take advantage of this application, um, there's a, a security user that you will need to enable and then provide a, a pass, password for that user. Once, um, once COM is installed um, and you start adding customers um, in, into the application, um, you then get two levels of, of, um, of user mode. So you've got a, an administrator mode, which means that they can do everything basically. So they can add new customers, um, upload software files for, for upgrades, uh, make changes to the systems. And then you've got something called operator. So the operator just has a slightly lower um, access privilege. So they will only be able to uh, modify their own customers. Um, so you've kind of got that hierarchy there of administrator and operator. So, so the idea is that um, specifically around cloud deployments, um, that the, yeah, the admin user will have full rights to access, create customers. So a customer in, in terms of COM, 
um, is actually an IP office deployment. So a customer, a single customer could be a primary, a secondary server and an IP500 V2 gateway. That's one customer. Once the um, customer is connected to COM, the administrator will be able to do things like check the uh, monitor the health of the system. It pulls in system alarms. So if there's an issue on the system's trunks, for example, an alarm will be sent, you will be able to see it in, in, uh, in COM. You can make changes, you can do upgrades. It gives you the option to, uh, as an administrator, to upload an ISO file for a new version, and then you can distribute it across the platform. Um, and then the operator will be able to do the installation um, of that software. So with the um, initial release of COM, um, you'll be able to manage uh, a total number of 1,000 customers, um, and those 1,000 customers can um, incorporate up to 3,000 nodes um, over those customers. So over the, um, over the last few releases, we've seen a push towards um, more resiliency. So currently, IP Office, we've got the resilient IP phones, we've got SIP extensions, Dex was made resilient, voicemails, voicemails resilient. Um, then in 10.1, we had the 1X portal made resilient. Um, and now, um, with release 11, we're going to see um, the WebRTC gateway made resilient. So this is part of um, Server Edition Select, um, and the reason why um, it has to be Server Edition Select is because um, it relies on 1X Portal being resilient too, um, and 1X Portal resiliency is only in Select. So this will work um, much the same way as the one X portal, so it's actually an active uh, active backup scenario. So whereas the primary and secondary server are active active, um, so if IP phones need to fail over, they're both currently they're, they'll both be currently active. Um, one X portal and the WebRTC gateway will be active backup. So. Resilient um, WebRTC, this will allow applications such as uh, a via communicator for web um, and also the, the new web client that we saw um, just earlier on, um, they will then be resilient. There's, a, there's an automatic failover as well, so um, if the primary uh, IP office uh, is lost, um, it will fail over obviously to the secondary. You, you don't need to re-log in, it will um, redirect you to the secondary uh, WebRTC gateway, um, and when the primary comes back up, vice versa, it will, um, it will automatically log you back in. So some improvements have also been made to the ICR or the uh, Integrated Contact Reporter. So this um, this was introduced in 10.1 um, as a as a as a basic call reporting application. So it's designed for a small deployment, um, 25 agents and five supervisors, um, and that's voice only. Obviously, if you wanted something larger than that, you could look at um, IPOCC or ACCS, which are the the multimedia contact centres. Um, so this is a, a native application, um, it's available on both the application server if you have an IP500 um, and it's also available in Server Edition and Server Edition Select um, and it actually installs as part of the deployment so there's no additional server and, and no additional installation really, it just installs um, by default. Um, and the way it was licensed, um, so you just need a number of power users um, that matches the amount of agents and supervisors you need. So if you wanted I don't know, five agents and two supervisors, you need seven power users on the system. The, the seven power users don't need to be the agents and the supervisors, um, but you just need to have that number of licenses available.
So with release 11, um, integrated contact reporter um, will support distributed agents. So this is over uh, SCN um, and, and also obviously the server edition networks. So it will also provide stats for internal calls. So prior to, to 11, um, ICR would only report on inbound external calls. Um, now when we're having it in a, in a distributed environment, we need to be able to report on calls that are coming in from other nodes on the network. So ICR will now support internal calls um, between nodes. So within the IP office configuration, um, if you've configured this before, you'll, you'll see this at the top right hand corner there. Um, so where you would select the contact center type, um, by um, in 10.1 you would just have integrated contact reporter as an option there. Um, and then with release 11, you will now get an option for integrated contact reporter centralized. So the idea is that the main, um, the main site you would set obviously as integrated contact reporter. And then the other sites or other nodes um, in the SCN or in the server edition um, that have agents assigned to them um, would then be selected as ICR centralized. So with, um, with the IP500, any of the nodes could be the main uh, ICR site, um, and then the other ones can be centralized. When you're using a server edition or a server edition select deployment, the primary server must be the main ICR in that deployment. Um, so trunks can be connected to any of the nodes um, and pointed at ICR groups. Remember, um, reporting and stats are only produced for ICR group agents. So if you just point it at a normal hunt group, obviously you won't get any stats um, or anything for those groups. Supervisors will, will have the ability to, to monitor um, agents across these um, networks as well. So it means that agents can be on different systems and still part of a distributed hunt group, for example. Uh, in terms of licensing, um, it's the same as before, so there's no changes. Um, it's still, you still need the number of power users um, available for, for the number of agents and supervisors that need to log in. Um, the only difference really, I suppose, is the, the site that you select as integrated contact reporter, that is the site that needs the licenses on it. So if you've got um, agents logging in from other nodes, they still get their licensing from the main ICR system. So, in, so I guess in essence, you would put all the power users for the for the agents you need on the main system that's connected and set up as integrated contact reporter. So ICR um, in release 11 also makes it easier for agents and supervisors to see uh, important KPIs or key performance indicators, such as calls in queue um, and, and longest wait time. Some of these were available in 10.1, but it, they weren't quite as easy to sort of view as they are now. So essentially, um, one of the stats there uh, showing the number of queued calls has been moved. So before it was just a, a number that just sat next to the phone icon. Now we've actually got a proper stat that comes up um, and shows the number of queued calls. You can then drill into it too. Um, so if you click into the call, you can then see how long it's been in there. If you go into that call, you can also see the phone number that's calling in. So we now have the number of calls coming in, um, how long they've been queuing for, and the caller ID as well. So as you can see, uh, on the top left window, um, the arrow pointing there, so that's showing there's a queued call. Um, if you then click on, on the queued call, it then takes you into a new window, um, and then you can see the current wait time of the caller and the caller's ID there. So we've also got some changes um, to the longest wait time. So this has been added to the home screen. Um, this is going to be calculated um, from when the call hits the ICR group. So not when the call comes through the voicemail call flow. So um, if you remember, ICR um, uses Voicemail Pro for its call flows and it uses hunt groups. Um, so this is um, the amount of time that the, the call has hit the group for. 
um, not how long it's been going through the, the, the voicemail call flow. Got a couple of um, sort of smaller features really um, on ICR. Um, so this one is the, the ability uh, to export um, reports. So in the initial release uh, of ICR, you were able to view them um, uh, as PDF, um, but we obviously need the ability to be able to, to, you know, to save these files, email them, that kind of thing. Um, so what, what we've got now in, in this um, first release of, of 11 um, is the ability to save it as an Excel spreadsheet. Um, you also got the ability, obviously, to still to view it as a as a PDF, um, and you can also print them. Um, but this is just giving that option to actually save the file uh, locally, um, and then you've got the option to to print them or email them. Also, um, in Web Manager, so Web Manager is obviously the, the, the management tool um, of choice now, really. Um, there's an option in here to, to access ICR um, and then upload your own logos. So you can actually upload your own custom logo, which can then be displayed on, on the reports. Um, so you can use um, images for PNGs, JPEGs, bitmaps, um, the usual thing. There's, there are some restrictions on it, but I think two megabytes is probably you know, fairly fairly good for, for a logo um, and this can then be uploaded to your reports. If, um, if you were running ICR in, in 10.1, um, this option obviously wasn't available. Um, so if you've pre-configured any reports, um, you just need to rerun uh, re them again and then the logo will be dragged in from, from ICR, uh, from Web Manager um, and then popped up onto the, onto the reports as they go on. Um, so, yeah, so as mentioned previously with the, the SD, SCN and distributed um, ICR agents, we've now got the ability um, to provide call stats for internal calls. Um, it, there may be some scenarios where you want to run reports, but you only want to see the external calls. Um, so there is actually an option for the reporting side to, to remove internal calls from the stats. Um, so this will give the supervisor an option to show only external uh, inbound calls um, rather than showing all, all the calls from inbound um, internal as well. So with um, with 10.1, um, this application, Media Manager, this um, this was introduced um, and is the native uh, call recording application for IP Office. So that's on both application server and, and server edition. Um, and it's slowly going to replace the, the contact report recorder application that we, that we currently have. So Media Manager um, provides a, a broader support for web browsers. So whereas contact recorder was restricted to Internet Explorer um, for playback and searching, um, this opens up further browsers. So you can then use Mozilla, Chrome, or Microsoft Edge. Um, you've just got more, more flexibility there by using this option. Um, and then we've also got the archiving options. Um, so we can archive off to a, a NAS a network storage drive. Um, and with 10.1, we also saw the introduction of some cloud storage coming in. Um, so you can upload your, um, your archived files to, to cloud storage. So the files are still recorded locally. This is just the option to, to archive them if they're over you know, 60 or 90 days to a, to a storage device. So with release 11, um, Media Manager is going to become the default recording application for IP Office on both application server and server edition. Um, so when you upgrade, the, the contact recorder service um, will be removed um, and Media Manager will be used um, from R11 onwards. Um, when you do this, uh, there will be a, there's a simple process in place for, for the migration, so you're not going to have to you know, rip and replace all your recordings. So the, the actual recording files, um, they will be staying in the same location that they were. So when you install Media Manager, the actual physical files will still stay in the same place as they were when, when it was Contact Recorder. 
the only thing you're migrating is the database from Contact Recorder to Media Manager. Um, and they've actually included in Web Manager a, a migration process. Um, and it's and it's down to you guys to run it. So you choose when to do it. And you basically press migrate, and then it will migrate all the database information. So it's all the information about the files over to Media Manager. Um, so yeah, some of the, the, the nicer things with Media Manager, for example, um, users. So where you've got the um, self-administer uh, web page, so that's the user's admin. Um, they are able to go into their and it will pull in all of their own recordings as well, so they can play back their own recordings through um, through self-administer. Okay, this um, this little tool here. This is. Um, it's something fairly small, but it just makes the installation side a lot easier. Um, so what it's doing is it's bringing together the ICU, so the, the initial configuration utility. Um, so that's always been on, on um, Server Edition, for example. When you first configure it, the ICU window will pop up. It's kind of like a give it IP addresses, names, LAN addresses, and that kind of thing. Um, so what it's doing is it's pulling all this information together into a, uh, to an easy-to-follow wizard. Um, so when you first log into a release 11 system, um, you'll get this screen that comes up, and that's on IP Office and Server Edition, um, and it will ask you to go through these boxes. Um, so the initial one system is really the main one, and it's the only mandatory one. So you go into here, and then you obviously have to give the system a name, uh, IP addressing, turn DHCP on and off, set up file servers, the voicemail type, that kind of thing. Um, then you can actually go through the other boxes, and you can enable things like H323 Gateway, uh, SIP Registrar, um, you can then move on to the voicemail, upload licensing. Uh, for the users and extensions, you can upload templates to, to save time, um, and then you can configure your groups, your trunks, uh, incoming call routes, that kind of thing. Um, it's really just to make it um, a faster install, to be honest, um, and everything is there. You can just go through the next steps, um, and you and you're not just logging into the system and, and sort of free for all around um, when you're doing the configuration. Um, so with with Server Edition um, Select in mind, I guess we you know we we expanded up to 3,000 user capacity. It's quite a large system. Um, so we've we've had call for deck to be increased, so the capacity to be increased. Um, so currently it's uh, 384 extensions and 128 base stations. Um, with R11, um, this is going to sort of almost double, really. Um, so for server edition deployments, it's going up to 750 extensions um, and 256 base stations. Um, on the 500v2, uh, as a standalone system, it's staying as before. So on a 500v2, it's still 384 extensions, uh, 128 base stations. Um, on server edition and select, um, it's going up to uh, 750 extensions and 256 base stations. Um, with that change, um, the restriction on the compact decked base stations is also being removed. So currently, if you're using compact base stations, you can only have five in the deployment. That restriction is being removed, um, so you can have as many as you like in there. Um, obviously, just bear in mind that the number of concurrent calls on a compact is, is lower than a standard um, four calls as opposed to six calls, but the number of base stations you can have is, is able to be increased. Um, when release 11 comes out, the, the update for DECT will be called DECT Edition 6. Um, it is DECT R4, but it's just Edition 6, so it will be a software update on the base stations and the handsets. Um, to get you that extra capacity. Okay, I'll just go have a quick look. So there's a, there's a question in there from Martin. Um, so Media Manager, um, yes, Media Manager is replacing a contact recorder. Um, it does work with ICR, ACCS um, in exactly the same way. Um, yeah. Exactly the same way. If you're actually running Contact Recorder now, 
um, and, you up, and you've got a, a, a recordings administrator's license in your system and you upgrade to release 11, um, you will be able to run Media Manager. You don't need to buy a new license. Um, if you buy a new R11 system and you want recording, um, other than the normal voicemail recording, um, you buy a license um, and it will be a Media Manager license as opposed to the recordings administrator license. Okay, so that's um, that's the end of the, um, the short sort of preview. Um, obviously, we haven't covered every single feature and function and, and new device that's becoming available. Um, we have seen information on some new handsets that are coming. Um, so there's some new J-series hand, handsets coming. Um, so we'll see further information on that. Um, we'll also hopefully get some more information on the Equinox side of things. Because um, currently, even on the beta, um, the Equinox client isn't available yet until January. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have a massive amount of information on the Equinox side. But as soon as we get that, obviously, we will um, then start to do more in-depth um, webinars and uh, information will be sent out for that. Um, yep, so just keep an eye out over the next few weeks and months, um, looking towards the release of, of 11 at the end of February. Um, so yeah, so thanks, uh, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Um, Merry Christmas and uh, have a good day.